Hello once again, children. We're going to be looking at pedigree diagrams because we have already looked at the different types of inheritance. And now we're going to look at what could possibly happen when there's a particular characteristic. And that characteristic, how does it pass from generation to generation? So tracing of this characteristic from generation to generation is represented in what is known as a pedigree diagram. Okay, now there are easy ways to handle a pedigree diagram and children always have difficulty somehow or the other, but if you follow these simple rules, it becomes very, very easy. So by the way, in a pedigree diagram, the squares represent a male. So let's just... Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at it, okay, I could... That's fine. Okay, the squares represent the male. So there's a square, John, Paul, the square, Lyle, the square. So there are three males in this particular family. Okay, and the females are the circles. I always say the females have more curves. So anyway, my dear children, generally they will provide you with a key. Now here they didn't provide you a key. The key will normally state that the shaded one has got the condition, unshaded one is normal. They normally provide you with the key. So if they ask you for the genotype, for example, you will say, Linda is a female with that condition, whatever the condition may be, or John is a male without the condition. So when you are describing the phenotype, you will state the sex as well as the condition, whether they have it or they don't have it, okay? Before I even look at the question, so that's the first thing to remember, that the squares are males and the circles are females. How many generations do you see over here? Just take a ruler and put it across like that, you know, like that, easy way. So that is first generation, second generation, third generation. So in other words, for Lyle, for Lyle who is a male, those are his grandparents. So who are Lyle's parents? Those are his parents. Are you with me? Who is Lyle's auntie? Fiona. So Gabby is his mommy. Fiona is his auntie. How do you know that straight bar across there indicates a marriage, hopefully a marriage, that from them children would come. So there's that there. So the two children for John and Linda are Fiona and Paul. Paul got married. Who did he get married to? Gabby. And he had two children, Mike and Lyle. Okay. So you know that. The next important thing is to now read the question. Okay. First of all, you read the question. I just gave you the background. Read the question. And find out which is the recessive and which is the dominant characteristic. The diagram below shows the pattern of inheritance of deafness in a family. So it traces deafness through the family. The letter capital H represents the allele for hearing, in other words, normal hearing. And small h represents the allele for deafness. So in other words, deafness is a recessive allele. Normal hearing is a dominant allele. So to be deaf, you've got to have two recessives, okay? So if you look at here, who is deaf here? Linda. Linda is there, okay? Now, John is normal. Now, when somebody is normal, they can either be homozygous normal or heterozygous normal. Homozygous normal or heterozygous normal because being normal is the dominant allele. So in other words, a normal person could be capital H, capital H, or capital H, small h. Okay, do we have that? But if you deaf, you can only be small h, small h, because it's a recessive characteristic. So now that you know the recessive characteristic, you've got small h, small h there, 
what you can do right now, what you can do right now is to put down the small h, small h, wherever else you can see a recessive characteristic like Lyle. No, Lyle would be also small h, small h. So would your pencil put down those that you definitely know? Okay. The ones that you won't definitely know are the normal characteristic because there's two versions. Capital H, capital H, or capital H, small h. Now, how do you decide whether it's capital H, capital H, or capital H, small h? By looking at the children. By looking at the children. Now, if you look at these children, even though the mummy is small h, small h, the children are both normal. Are you with me? They're both normal. So what was the phenotype, genotype of Fiona? What was the genotype of Fiona? Hmm? The genotype of Fiona could only be one thing. Hmm? Remember when I told you you have a heterozygous cross a homozygous recessive? You get the genotype one is to one. Genotype one is to one where 50% of them will be capital H, small h, and 50% in small h, small h. So therefore, this combination, the dominant characteristic is only that. And Paul as well. Paul as well, he could never be capital H, capital H. Why, my darlings? Let me give him some more space. Paul needs a bit more space, you know? So Paul is capital H, small h, and Fiona is capital H, small h. How is it that Paul and Fiona could not be capital H, capital H? Because the mommy had only had the small h to give to each of them. She doesn't have a capital H. Are you with me? So therefore, Paul and Fiona are capital H, capital, small h, capital H, small h. So you could work this out easily by doing that cross. But very often you are not given that. And if you are not given John's genotype, you would have had to know that Paul and Fiona could only be that. Why, my darlings? Why? Because they would have received one of that in, from their mommy. They could never have been capital H, capital H. Okay? Good. Was there a possibility that John and Linda could have had a child who is deaf? Was there a possibility? Remember, there's always a possibility of an offspring being born. Was there a possibility? Yes. There's a 50% chance that children will appear like this of these parents, and there's a 50% chance they'll appear like this. For these two parents, they just had children who are normal because there was a 50% chance that the children would be born normal. Now, Paul, who is capital H, small h, Paul, who is capital H, small h, my darlings. Mm -hmm. All right, let me just write it out one more time and I'm sure this will confuse the whole thing. <laughs> Paul, who is capital H, small h, gets married to Gabby, who is also normal. But they land up with a child who is small h, small h. So Paul, who is capital H, small h, has a child who is small h, small h with Gabby. Now he would give the small h to Lyle because he gives one of his alleys. So where would the other small h come from? Gabby. So therefore Gabby could only be one genotype. Gabby could only be one genotype. She's normal. If you're normal, you could be capital H, capital H, or capital H, small h. But because Lyle, because Lyle has small h, small h, Gabby had to be, my darlings, Gabby had to be capital H, small h. Good. Okay. So Gabby had to be capital H, small h. So we got Gabby, capital H, small h, Paul, capital H, small h. And therefore, they landed up with a child who is small h, small h. What would you say Mike is? Mike is a normal, normal hearing kid. 
Hmm? So if she's normal, she could be capital H, capital H, or capital H, small h. Because this two combination can produce capital H, capital H with Nikkei being big, or capital H, small h, and Nikkei could also be capital H, small h. So if they ask you an examination, give the possible genotype or genotypes of Nikkei, your answer would be capital H, capital H, or capital H, small h. Is that okay? So let's go through it one more time. Generally, in order to know the genotypes of the parents, look at the genotype of the children. If any of the children present with a recessive one, it's easy to work out that each of the parents had a small H. In this case, they gave you the genotypes of both. So let's go and look at one more question. That's if we can find one more question, my darlings. Let's look at one more question and see if we can answer this question when you take out all our H's. Okay. Good. This is showing you the inheritance of hemophilia. In the first one, it was just a case of complete dominance. Now, in this particular case, they're using sex-linked inheritance hemophilia. They didn't tell you it's sex-linked, but you should know you learned that hemophilia was sex-linked. Now, my darlings, we got a bit of a problem here, isn't that so? Or do we? No, we don't. If we understand the same rules where you can work out the genotype of the parents by looking at the genotypes of the children. In this case, you got a key, you got an unaffected female. Are you with me? You got an affected male and an unaffected male. Okay. Unfortunately, in this particular one, I cannot draw genotypes with the superscripts like X to the capital H, X to the small h. So I'll just be using, speaking to you verbally about the genotypes, but you're gonna be working it out for me. Suffice for, you, for me to tell you, my darlings, that there are two genotypes you would know for sure. Which are the two genotypes you would know for sure? the genotypes of the males, because males could either be this or that, and the genotype of an affected female. In other words, a genotype of a hemophiliac female, a genotype of a hemophiliac male, and a genotype of an unaffected male. But we don't have any females here who are affected. We just got unaffected females, and we've got affected male. Affected male means hemophiliac. So this will be X to the small h, Y. This will also be X to the small h, Y. This would also be X to the small h, Y. Are you with me? Hmm? Right? The unaffected males, X to the capital H, Y. 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 Okay, so the daddy is normal. The mummy is also normal, but they got a son who is hemophilia. And what did I say to you? To have a son, you just take the Y from the father. So what is a hemophiliac son? X to the small h Y. So if you got the Y from the father, where did you get the X to the small h from? From the mum. But the mum is normal. So what is her other value? X to the capital H. So mummy would be X to the capital H, X to the small h. So that is how you could work out the genotypes of the parents based on the genotype of the child. Go ahead and do this question from your wife's book. And when I see you, we'll be looking at the answers to this question number nine. God bless you. And that is the end to sex-linked inheritance. Please practice, 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 as practice makes perfect.